Hello, my name is Claire Slack. I will be a senior at Notre Dame Cathedral Latin High School in the fall. This is my first year in the science internship program for nursing. I was placed in diabetes education and this summer I worked on a project called Is Knowledge of Insulin Peak or Duration and Health Literacy Level Associated with Episodes of Hypoglycemia in Adult Patients with Insulin Dependent Diabetes? Some diabetes background. Diabetes is one of the most common chronic diseases that can affect people of any age group. There are approximately 25.8 million people affected nationwide. Diabetes affects the pancreas and how insulin is administered throughout the body in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. In type 1, the patient is totally insulin dependent. The pancreas does not produce natural insulin that people need to survive. Typically, this type develops in the earlier years. In type 2, the pancreas may produce some insulin, but the body won't respond to it normally. Typically, this is found in older people, but it should be understood that type 2 diabetes could be a wear and tear side effect of life or of an illness just like a sore throat might be. The effects of diabetes are hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia. In hyperglycemia, this means that there's too much glucose or sugar in the bloodstream. Not enough glucose circulating throughout the body is called hypoglycemia. Both of these are serious side effects and could even result in death if they are not treated properly. The research questions I was trying to answer with my study are what is the knowledge level of insulin among patients and is there a connection between the knowledge level of insulin versus the amount of hypoglycemia episodes the patients have had in the last six months. The sample that I worked with were compliant patients that must have agreed to participate in their interview process. In total, this project consisted of 31 participants with either type 1 or type 2 diabetes ranging between 31 and 78 years of age. Patients did not take part if they met any of the following exclusion material. If the patient was not dependent on diabetes, if the patient did not communicate in English, if the patient was cognitively impaired or otherwise unable to participate due to mental status. My methodology consisted of a semi-structured interview format. It was one time only, face to face, and completed in about 10 minutes. Data was com collected regarding participants' knowledge level about their insulin. Demographic data about what the typical participant looked like goes as follows. About 77% were Caucasian, 23% were African American, 58% were male, and 42% were female. 71% of the people interviewed had type 2 diabetes, leaving 29% with type 1. To the left, the insulin type pie chart shows the most popular long-lasting insulins. They're Lantus, NPH, and Humalog. These require only about one shot a day, so they don't have a peak for when they work hardest in the body. There were three questions on the interview pertaining directly to the participants' knowledge of insulin. Three out of three correct earn 100% or a score of 1. Two out of three correct earned 66% or a score of one. One out of three correct earned 33% or a score of two. And zero out of three correct earned 0% or two. Only seven participants had a score of one, while 24 earned a score of two or less than 66% correct. The number of hypoglycemia, number of hypoglycemia episodes in the last six months was considered to be low if it had zero to six were reported, and seven to 30 or more reported was considered to be a large number, with severi severity considered. This means that medical attention may not have had to have been sought due to, to the patient's self-medication. This chart of hypoglycemia results shows that 23 participants, or 74% per, per, of people surveyed, had six or less hypoglycemia episodes. It also shows that eight people, or 26% of the people surveyed, had more than six. The preliminary analysis began by creating two binomial variables, the knowledge level of insulin and the hypoglycemic episode count. To pass, the score had to be 66% or above, and the patient did not pass if the score was 66% or lower. If six or less episodes of hypoglycemia were reported, that was considered a low number, and if more than six were reported, the number was considered to be high. 
A cross-tabulation test was run showing a target of seven people had a score of one and had six or less episodes in the past six months. It also showed that 16 people with a score of two had six or less episodes in the past six months. It showed that zero with a score of one had more than six in six months, and eight with a score of two did have six in the past, more than six in the past six months. My conclusions for the study were that the results determined the association was not significant. It also proved the knowledge level of insulin regarding peak and duration is extremely low, which is good for diabetic educators to know so that they have a better idea of what to teach patients. The study ran into these limitations. Preliminary analysis was drawn from a small convenience sample. Intervening variables included severity of diabetes and length of time living with the disease. I would recommend that if replication of the study would be continued, to use a larger sample size using patients with similar educational background, specify the severity of hypoglycemic episodes, and patients should be on insulin for a standard of at least two years. I would like to thank my mentors, Mary Chisholm, Gail Hofgard, Mary Beth Zini, my parents, Hillcrest Hospital staff, participants of the study, and the Office of Civic Education Initiatives. Thank you very much for the opportunity.